this uh, sad looking pile of uh, parts lying strewn out over the floor is a Powek uh, PPS 10.48-6000 uh, which is a, a 6 uh, kilowatt uh, 48 volt uh, rectifier unit uh, it's uh, recycled from a, a telecom site and I've kind of been using it as a spare 48 volt charger just uh, really terribly uh, hooked up I had to rip the entire thing apart to disassemble it in order to fit it in the van uh, and this thing has just kind of been floating around like this for years. Uh, it's it's a sad sight. I have a bunch of unit uh, these power units. It's a really nice modular three phase supply, a uh, six kilowatts. It's just a good unit. Passively cool too. Uh, not the most efficient thing. Eighty something percent. It's from 1997, so you can see why they uh, decided to retire it. It's it's run many many thousands of hours. Uh, but it does still work, all the units work, everything is in a perfectly operating condition. This thing was in use uh, until its retirement and uh, I don't even know when the last time they had to do any repairs on it was, probably a long time ago. Uh, so I've finally decided to put it back together. Now this mighty big thing is the rack that it came with. This is the entire a PPS 10.48 uh, minus uh, about uh, 40 centimeters off the top because this thing, the reason it's been lying around is that the bloody rack is so tall that uh, it wouldn't fit inside of the basement. So I've just been putting off cutting it up and uh, installing it. It's been just lying disassembled in a pile. But finally, I uh, got my thumb out of my behind, got the angle grinder out, and uh, cut it to size. So, uh, finally, uh, we're about to have some kind of decent extra 48 volt charging solution. Uh, because uh, the reason I want to have this is that uh, uh, that green box over there, my inverter uh, charger, it's a China unit. It's going to fail sooner or later and it's going to be out of commission and then I want to have some ability to really emergency charge my batteries. Just in case it fails while I'm gone, the batteries are completely dead when I get here. I don't want to have to charge them at one or two kilowatts. I want to charge them with a lot of kilowatts. Uh, so we're going to be needing this thing just for contingency. Uh, so originally this thing it had a redundant 100 amp hours, uh, 12 volt uh, battery blocks in the bottom. We're not going to be able to fit all of those. Uh, it's actually, uh, those batteries over there uh, came out of the same system. Uh, those have been in service in that rack many years ago. Uh, so we're going to be putting those four guys uh, back in the original rack. And uh, maybe we'll get something rather professional looking out of this. Right from there we have the uh, back plane and, well, the mechanical mounting module. Uh, in place. So it took a bit of trial and error to get it to the right height. I thankfully have a drawing of uh, how it's supposed to go together in the manual. So you can see that there's supposed to be a little spacer up there and then the top and then the uh, breaker panel and finally the rectifier modules down the bottom. And getting all that to line up was uh, uh, got on the second attempt placed the entire rectifier module one step too high first have a little uh, cover that wouldn't fit and uh, you do want some space uh, above this uh, because if, uh, all the wiring basically goes up here and if you're going to do any high current wiring fat wires they're going to be coming through uh, here and going to uh, wherever you need them to so I remounted this uh, breaker rack uh, it's a uh, been dismounted because I stole all, <laughs> stole all the breakers from it. Didn't figure I'd ever use it, but it uh, turns out I was wrong. Uh, so you gen usually have a big row of breakers here. Uh, I just put a 10 and a 20 of that. For the time being, I can add more uh, as needed. This thing might turn into a bit of a distribution rack as it uh, was intended to be uh, from a factory. You, also, you even have some kind of diagnostic thing, that's what this little piece of people with tabs here is for. I think it can monitor uh, if any break is going for an alarm 
something like that. It has a decent amount of functionality via uh, control module. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to wire all this up. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to run like a few battery banks, uh, like might, might use this as a breakout box for battery banks, since I, I might want to put batteries in there in the future. And uh, I have this chunk in the corner there. And there's of course going to be at least four down in the rack there. So I'm going to need, it could be useful to just run a fat wire from the DC box there to this and then break it out into smaller strings from here for stuff that's more uh, towards uh, this part of the basement uh, because uh, right now the, the, those batteries over there they're just running on uh, the aux jack on the DC central you can see the Anderson connector there uh, with just like a 50 amp breaker so you can't really you can't really do much with these they're just sort of along for the ride and uh, I'm, I'm obviously gonna have to put uh, some fatter wiring going in this probably just run it diagonally across there to keep over run short to over uh, DC uh, breaker box uh, but uh, we'll see we'll see how uh, it's going to be a future project that for sure for, for the time being we're just getting this thing made then maybe putting batteries in it anybody need some DC so I've got it pretty much all mounted up now uh, we're missing all the battery wiring and we're missing the batteries I still need to put some work into them but we do have all our six uh, 1.3 kilowatt uh, rectifier modules in i don't even want to count how much power this thing can put out and uh, rest assured it's more than we can get through this three times 75 square mil uh, lamp cord but uh, this should not go on fire if we plug it in so let's just bring you guys along for the first try, here we go. If uh, this goes super wrong, uh, it's gonna go dark in that room because it's on the same breaker, but here we go. Ah, would you listen to that? Click, all modules online. Now the backlight in this thing has uh, long since failed. But as you can see, we have 54.05 volts out. And uh, no current anywhere because, well, we have no, no anything connected. And that through an alarm because it doesn't have battery, it doesn't have any breakers, it doesn't have, <laughs> doesn't have anything. Uh, so uh, I have noticed while I was putting it together, I managed to nicely bolt it to the wall there with a couple of screws so this thing real isn't going anywhere uh, and uh, these are some original ground terminals uh, uh, this was this is connected to positive on the output so we actually have 54 volts there uh, and uh, that was just jumpered to that and going to case ground uh, putting it in positive ground mode since uh, uh, this is a telco thing you have a positive ground and negative supply so that's how this entire thing is constructed the uh, a break is there, they actually break the negative side, uh, so you need to be mindful of that when you're uh, mucking around with things, which uh, some previous technician was not. I'm sure he was on the negative terminal there, and it went bang because he shorted negative 48 volts to the ground. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm gonna repurpose these uh, terminals up here just for output terminals, basically. Uh, so we're gonna have positive and negative uh, going out of the uh, entire thing, that like main battery bus uh, voltage, which is gonna be the same battery bus as uh, all those batteries, some fat wires are going over here. It's all, it's all we need. Uh, and then I might just use this uh, for the breakers, really. They're so handy and just uh, uh, put some 48 volt gear uh, in here since we, we have like more 48 volt breakers than we could ever need. Uh, now the rack, since I've actually cut it short, uh, we can only fit four batteries in here. I've spaced these shelves out so we can get two batteries down there and two down there. Uh, originally uh, it's intended to have the batteries actually flipped over with the terminals facing forward uh, but I know the gel cells that I'm running, they don't like being flipped over, they just start leaking with time and 
failing. So I actually have a battery uh, standing up with the terminals pointing up because they're just they're just happiest that way. Uh, even though we we lose some packing density but from doing that since uh, the batteries are deep and uh, low if we have them lying down and they're narrow and tall if we have a standing up so we could have a, have the shelves more compactly spaced if they were lying down but uh, battery lifetime comes uh, before packing density i wouldn't be able to fit two sets of batteries in this anywhere since we've cut you know 40 centimeters on the top so at the best we could fit six batteries in this thing and you know that's that's just no good uh, we need to have uh, multiples of four have you ever had one of those days where you're just sitting around minding your own business and then a european energy crisis hits well i have now and uh, this rack has suffered uh, in the few days since uh, that uh, has uh, have been going on because I needed to have some extra charging power, one phase charging power. Uh, so I had to rip all the modules out because they don't have any current limits uh, and only put one poor thing in which was has been running quite constantly at 100% uh, load, basically uh, turning into the surface of the sun in the process. Uh, but uh, today I finally figured out the wiring for batteries and we have the batteries as well would you look at that They're so big I can't even fit them all in the frame that would be a beautiful sight if the entire thing was actually assembled uh, so uh, the batteries are performing very well and uh, I have wired everything up in a mm, typical way for me so, uh, since these batteries used to be terminal side uh, facing me, uh, they were would be using jumpers like those uh, to hook together since they work well uh, in 2D. Uh, but uh, since they're this way, uh, and I don't feel like crimping one million jumper wires, I have just repurposed uh, some uh, terminals from these are my old from my old battery bank power safe uh, battery terminals from the 170 amp power uh, 12 volts blocks and uh, some jumpers from those as well I very carefully lined everything up so it works uh, beautifully so these are nice uh, fat jumpers and uh, between the batteries I've taken some 35 square mil uh, grounding cable and just uh, crimped it in each end putting the terminal there. Moving on to the rest of the batteries. Uh, so I've, I think this is actually a reasonable way of uh, uh, connecting these up since the terminals on these, they don't move as much as on the two volt cells, but I have seen them kind of shuffle around. So we, you don't want to just put this thing across there because it's actually going to end up kind of tilted with time and it's going to put uh, too much load on the terminals if anything ever moves. Uh, but uh, doing it this way, we have a few axes of uh, rotation, which uh, we can take, take advantage of, some softness and everything. Uh, so, you now we have all the batteries in. Uh, we have a negative end here, under a nice little rubber plop blob. So, this is all uh, actually wired up and basically ready to go. Positive end over there. And, uh, of course, since this is Tokyo gear, we have a positive end coming up right there negative and going to that breaker and uh, I'm quite sure uh, we're ready to just uh, flip the breaker and turn it on let's uh, double check the polarity so we have that's our negative it goes across there down there all the way down here to the negative terminal and the positive terminal with a little red positive thing on it right there that goes up to the positive with another little red positive thing. So I think we can flip this breaker and we should see about one million amps flowing through this. Let's see. Ah, only seven amps. But uh, we are actually feeding current from uh, through uh, this cable which is hooked up to that battery bank uh, and 
uh, obviously going straight to a battery breaker, so we're just jumping current through there to bring these batteries up to a float voltage. Probably, probably see quite a bit more than seven amps actually flowing. If we bring the clamp meter in, Alright, under two amps. Fair enough. What's that? 1.5 amps going in. Okay, so we're not charging them so much. Although these guys were fully charged, even though they have been. They're sitting for a little while. Yeah, so I have put some uh, monitoring lugs on here. I'm just gonna solder some shoddy loom to actually hook up to the uh, symmetry uh, terminals on here, but it's um, some of those uh, connectors there. And uh, after that, this thing is ready to be uh, wired up properly. Uh, now, for the time being, let's see what we have. I oh, know. I'm actually completely lying to you. This is for the cable to the main bank <laughs> that's just hanging here. Uh, this would be the cable that goes to uh, the uh, yeah, blocks over there. Yes, that is how it's done through a massively oversized 63 amp breaker for six square mil wire, but shh, no one needs to know that. This is just a temporary horrible fix. Uh, so I actually have found uh, some suitable cable to uh, hook it's up to the main bank. We have this, this uh, is uh, three times uh, 35 square mil plus a 35 square mil uh, screen. I have no idea what this has been uh, used for, but it's in rather bad condition. Uh, but if we just to chop this off, re-strip everything, re-crimp it, uh, this thing is actually by far long enough uh, to go between uh, the uh, power rack that we've been setting up and uh, the main DC is central over here. I'm not actually sure how we're gonna go about uh, wiring it up here because we are kind of out of space. Uh, I don't, f we need to put it on the secondary side of a breaker. So we basically need to hook it up into uh, the DC bus here somehow. Uh, we have, these are 70 square mil uh, cables. I think this will take up to like 100 square mil. Uh, so if we do it kind of terribly and just uh, put 135 in each, maybe uh, we can get away with just shoving more wire in there. Uh, but it's gonna be a chore. And we can't really use the breakers for anything uh, because we want uh, that thing to be you know, redundant for uh, this big battery. Uh, in case both of these uh, banks need to be offline, I still wanna be able to run from this. And uh, with this, these two banks, we can easily push uh, well over 100 amps, uh, no prob, uh, into the system until we get the big banks up and running. Uh, so that's probably gonna be how I do it, just to poke the wires through one of these pass-throughs and uh, like bolt it up somehow mounted to the wall, ceiling, and into a rack over there. Ah, but it is nice to finally have the whole thing powered up. This thing is actually in use right now through this horrible temporary uh, wiring uh, since uh, uh, we, we actually have uh, everything <laughs> uh, set up in, oh my God, the worst possible way, that's just, that's not how you do it. Just don't, don't, don't do what I do. Do what I say, not what I do. We've achieved sausage. So, uh, I've just been gleefully wiring everything up now with a bit more properly uh, with uh, this uh, probably 50 year old, uh, I think it's uh, four times 25 square mil cable. It could be four times 35. Uh, but uh, at least we, we should be getting about uh, two times 50 square mil in this. Uh, all summed up at least. It's a bit difficult to measure because of how it's constructed. Uh, now I've intended to mount this properly from the get-go, but apparently uh, getting your hands on uh, the little uh, finger magics which mount these to the wall is uh, basically impossible right now. So uh, I, I can't actually mount <laughs> in my channels 
you know, two main for cable propeller. So it's just kind of dangling roughly where it's going to be. It's going to go up like so probably in the future. Uh, but yeah, it's a big sturdy cable and I've just finished wiring it up to the main DC bus. Uh, so uh, the bottom side of these uh, terminal blocks is uh, the inverter. Uh, so these uh, fat black wires, they go straight to the inverter. Uh, they're paralleled up two and two, so it's, uh, it's uh, basically two times 140 square mil going to the inverter there. And we're just parallel paralleling up one of these with each of uh, the wires there. Uh, and that's to make sure we get equal loading uh, across both of the, of the battery banks in this end. Uh, if I'm feeding power, say if I just hook up to a battery one there, uh, then, then we're going to be having more voltage from battery one than battery two because that current is going to be raising with points here and then it has to go all the way through the wires to the inverter and back here uh, before it uh, gets to battery two. Uh, so that's why we're using all four of these and because I kind of can't easily fit any more wires than this. Uh, these uh, terminals are they're really at their capacity right now. I think they might be ever so slightly above the maximum rated capacity but you know, it's good uh, given the size of wiring that, that they can take. We're actually not running them all that hard. Now, but I've just turned the uh, power on for the main batteries. I had everything uh, turned off for a moment, and uh, I did find out that if you try to put that thing, the lime green MPB solar slash Voltronic box, into uh, grid only mode uh, from uh, battery mode it, it, it just turns off with no warning so we had a lovely five minute blackout by the, while the bloody thing rebooted uh, but anyway if you'll appreciate my artwork there for a moment uh, I've just checked everything out and uh, we're quite ready to flip the final breakers so uh, everything's still a bit haphazard because I actually need this system online right now uh, but we have the uh, old uh, 300 amp power bank there uh, hooked up through this terrible wire uh, just uh, coming in as a load uh, to the power rack uh, so this breaker is for that uh, then we have the internal batteries in the rack the uh, new white ones they on that breaker and of course have a big chonking uh, long uh, black sausage is going on H a vat breaker. Uh, so uh, we should really be ready to go and I think we should probably start by just flipping the breaker for a uh, big battery bank. Uh, so here we go, let's see if I can do this in shot. This should wake up when I do that or it should go extremely bang. Ah, uh, no fireworks today. That's looking quite happy. Booting up, we're going to get a voltage on the display in a moment. There we go. 53.75 volts, it reads a bit low. So if we uh, plug that in to the grid, uh, that should be able, this is a straight from the grid, and we should be able and to actually charge the main bank from this. We should even get a current readout if we uh, go to the appropriate thing and choose boost you can hear the rectifier screaming to life and we're charging at uh, 23.5 amps and slowly pushing the voltage up that's just the current limit of this poor single rectifier uh, which is all we have installed right now so uh, this thing is running absolutely to its breaking point and soon it's going to start smelling uh, like hot electronics because 1.3 kilowatts passive the cooler sits. It's, it's, it's taking it a bit too far. It's only about 90% efficient, so yeah. Now, it's going to be interesting to see, I can't measure it on camera, uh, how much uh, voltage drop we actually get between these. It shouldn't be too much, uh, but uh, that's certainly going to be better than what I've had uh, running temporarily up until now with just uh, this long uh, two times uh, four square millimeter cable so we're going from eight square mil uh, to uh, either 50 or 70. Uh, so that's 
there's a decent bit of chunkiness difference between those and that's uh, hopefully going to make a big difference. We're also, by doing it like this, we're also losing a bunch of rather high impedance wiring uh, in the DC box here because we are losing uh, two of these connectors and uh, we are losing this long uh, aux uh, wiring going through its uh, separate breaker before it gets to the battery bus and all that's just gone and when we're running this at you know close to its rated 50 amp uh, limit that's that's a bit of power like these uh, wires they they do get warm when i'm just running this thing into high heavens uh, and uh, that's not what you want to have between basically a quarter of battery capacity and your load that's just no good these batteries aren't going to be doing everything they can uh, but uh, well, that's done. Current is dropping down a bit. The battery should be fairly charged by now. So we can flip the next battery breaker. This one hasn't been tampered with, so it should just uh, work. Oh, there we go. That's the internal batteries on. Uh, that would be these four guys. And uh, the current jumped up a bit as they're uh, going up to the full charge again. And now finally, we have the 63 amp breaker, which is a bit oversized for this wiring, but it's, it's just, it, it, it works in practice, okay. Uh, like so. And now we are completely online through the big black sausage. And we are charging up uh, with a bit less current actually, because uh, the current meter only goes uh, for the batteries, uh, and since this isn't a battery, this is a load, uh, that's not going to show up on the meter. I, I, I want to put this uh, actually in parallel with the internal battery here at some point, uh, but I just don't like this as temporary wiring. I need to get a better cable uh, to uh, go over there before I do that. I don't want to waste cable shoes on something as ugly as this. Ah, but there we go. This thing has taken... <laughs> A cosmetic turn for the worse, that's for sure. Uh, but it is uh, now reasonably functional. Uh, this should be able to power uh, about a hundred, well, exactly uh, 126 amps, uh, if we really push it, uh, from all these, all these batteries over there. And that's a decent chunk of current. That's roughly, you know, most of what one half of uh, my big battery can do and uh, these guys are not going to have like in parallel they're not going to have any issues they're pushing 130 amps so they're, they're not going to last for too long of course because they're puny in comparison but uh, they can sustain a big load uh, if i need to take that bank offline for any reason they will keep the 48 volt dc bus alive uh, until i can get whatever issues uh, present sorted which is beautiful. I'm not sure if I might end this video there. I know we're not ending the video quite yet because we still need to do a load test on this. Uh, there's no point having a nice uh, big redundant system if you don't know that it actually works. Uh, so uh, I've wired up my uh, very long, terrible uh, multimeter lead uh, over here. And uh, what we're gonna do is be testing the voltage drop across the cable and all connectors. Uh, so I'm reasonably confident about everything from here onwards, but I want to see up to this point uh, what kind of voltage drop we actually get uh, in the cable on the load. Uh, so we're going to be measuring millivolts with this meter uh, across uh, each of the leads. So we're going to be measuring uh, from one end of this cable to uh, this uh, uh, screw here from one end of the a black cable to this screw and so forth uh, just to see that they're all performing roughly the same uh, i think uh, this one which is actually the screen in the cable uh, is slightly thinner uh, if we put the clamp meters on these uh, right now we're actually pushing about a, a 20 amps 18 amps or so uh, from the other uh, rack over there you can see we have 9.6 amps in uh, both the positive leads roughly uh, but if we go to this special boy 
We only have about 7.5, so that means it's got a slightly higher impedance. Uh, but I don't think that's due to a bad connection. I think it's just because there's slightly less copper in this uh, for some reason. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, there's nothing more to it than to kill uh, the big batteries. Uh, we should still be pushing about the same current. Uh, and now we need to turn uh, this guy uh, to run a bit more current. We're going to step up a few times uh, just to run more uh, hybrid battery current. Currently it will draw about 18, 18 and a half amps. Uh, but we need to step that up uh, slowly towards, you know, about 100, 110 or so. That's about all I want to push uh, through the 130 amp uh, breaker we have inside that uh, box. We don't want to overload and cause it to trip. It just wears it out. Uh, so to load the system down, thankfully we have a 15 kilowatt dummy load here. And it's curved outside. Uh, so I usually have this guy set to limit the compressor speed to 33 rpm uh, and uh, well uh, I can just turn it up to basically consume as much power as I want right now uh, so we can just turn turn this up a bit uh, in a uh, while we have we're running the test to adjust as uh, how much current we're uh, going to be drawing all right I've uh, actually crunched the numbers and uh, uh, the uh, wire we have here, we have a total of 50 square millimeters for the uh, positive leads and a total of uh, 25 plus 16 square millimeters for the negative leads because the, uh, as I suspected, the screen is a bit small, it's only 16 square mil, uh, whereas the other three conductors are 25. Uh, that's still well within spec uh, because if we have a look uh, at uh, the spec for that cable in miscale here. Uh, you can see that for uh, 50 square mil we have a total current rating of 160 amps and for 41 we get 150. So we're not going to be overloading the screen at all and we really get a quite low po power dissipation in this uh, 5.8 meter long cable. So uh, I've uh, plugged the numbers here with a, a current of 50 amps uh, and uh, we should get uh, about 90 millivolts of drop uh, is what we expect a bit more since we're going through a few crimp terminals and connectors so I'm gonna say uh, if, if we get a hundred millivolts I'm gonna be perfectly happy with that if we get more than that I'm gonna have to reconsider it's it's still not a huge deal we'll just have to keep an eye on the temperatures but uh, the uh, heat pump is running Let's see you know, how much current we're actually drawing now. We're drawing about 50 amps. So that's good. Let's see what we have current-wise. We still have the big battery breakers off. 27 amps. 28 amps. 32 amps. and 22 amps so the blue guy is going to be running at a bit higher current but since we're only uh, fused at 126 amps in the other end uh, I don't think we're ever going to see uh, more than 160 well we're never going to see anything uh, exceeding the current rating on this but we're going to have to double check anyway let's uh, take a look at the uh, voltage drops we hooked to the positive terminal in the upper end 113 millivolts, okay, so that's in the higher end for that one, and the other one, 113. Okay, so that's, that's higher, a bit higher than I would have wanted to see, but it's, since we have exactly the same amount of drop in both of these, I'm not gonna, I'm not too concerned. We'll see, I'm gonna keep an eye on the temperatures. So, here, uh, let's do the same thing, except... Uh, we just tested these guys, which are the positive ones. Now we need to test the negative ones. So we're just going to move our probe from the positive. Try to move it to the negative. There we go. So that's our negative terminal. So let's see the blue fat one. 134 millivolts, a bit higher as you would expect since it's carrying more current, and this one, 
still, this would be 16 square mil uh, screen, 140 millivolts, the highest as you would expect. So this is all making a lot of sense. So we can, I'm, 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 I'm reasonably happy with this. We can go ahead and raise the current a bit. We might, might need to turn the inverter up a bit higher still, but I think we have some headroom. 100 amps. Here we go. I'm oh, screaming to life. So this is putting a fair amount of load on the batteries and the rectifier on the other end, which is actually running. Uh, but yeah, we're not quite coming up to uh, 100 amps on this, it seems. So we need to turn the inverter up just a bit higher. We need to be consuming a bit over 5 kilowatts. 45 RPM maybe? This should rev up almost instantly. There we go, I turned the voltage, uh, minimum voltage level for uh, hybrid operation uh, down to 43 volts for testing, so we're putting, pulling about 80 amps. Right now, let's just uh, see what we get over here. 45 amps in the red one. 47 amps in that one. 54 amps in that one, and it's going to be a bit lower. 37 amps in the screen. So that's nice and balanced, it's roughly what I want to see. So let's check the voltage drops. So in the blue one, 225 millivolts. In the screen, 200. 35 millivolts are a bit different as you would expect. Let's check the positive side Now we're going back to the positive. So this is including a voltage drop between cable shoe and shoe Copper lug. So we are not measuring the pure of a cable. There's a bit of interface there as well rather low resistance interfaces, but It does make a difference at these higher current levels you get a millivolt here and a millivolt there. So that's 192 millivolts and 192. So I'm really happy with the two positives here. They're very well matched, performing uh, beautifully as they should. And we have no heat anywhere. Nothing's getting warm. That's good. Let's step it up a bit further. 55 RPM on the compressor. And it's gonna rev up. I think we're gonna max our 100 amp current limit with this. And we definitely are. So we're getting 47, almost 47 volts at the inverter terminals. This inverter does not have four wire measurements, so that's measuring right here, actually, basically there, in there somewhere. So this is a good performance. Now we're getting. 101 amps, so that's more like 104, something like that. That current sensor is a bit dodgy, that's just too low. Yeah, but let's uh, check the voltage drops again. So that's one positive, 224, and 224. That's beautiful. And if we plug that into miscal, uh, we're supposed to be getting about 185, so we're, we're a bit on the high side, but I'm going to say it's more than tolerances. Uh, I don't have the cable length, you know, perfect, and we are measuring those extra voltage drops in the interfaces. So I'm, uh, I'm going to call this uh, absolutely acceptable. Let's uh, check the negative side. This guy is going to start working rather hard by now, I think. All right. So the maximum specification for this cable is 110 amps. Uh, I don't think we're going to be anywhere near that. No, 64, and in the screen we have 44 and a half. That's uh, well within uh, the capability of these cables. That's perfectly fine. So let's uh, check the drops. 265 millivolts and 278. This is tracking beautifully. And again, if we check these specifications, we have 
for the screen we have 16 square mils at 45 amps uh, we get a specification of about 250 millivolts so that's absolutely beautiful that's <laughs> That's better than the rest of them, really, as far as uh, living up to theoretical specs go. So, let's really max this out. Let's go to 120 amps. Exciting. There we go, 121 amps. So, what we can immediately see is we have a good voltage here. We don't have any huge drop-offs. Uh, the batteries and uh, rectifier are performing well. About 20 amps is coming from the rectifier, the rest from the batteries. Uh, 120 amps rated. So, uh, let's see, we have 52, 53 amps in the thinnest one, which is well within spec, 77 amps, 65 amps, and 66 amps. So we're running these cables roughly at 50% of their maximum rated capacity which is absolutely fine. If we go in higher than this, the uh, 126 amp breaker over there is going to f uh, cut the current so we're at no risk of actually overloading the cable, which is what you want. You don't want to start a fire. So let's check the voltage drops. And that's scaling beautifully. That's for the 16 square mil screen, 335 millivolts. Uh, 320 for the blue one that's in parallel with the screen so that's you know uh, on a hunch looking at the other data we have that just seems beautiful so let's uh, check the positives and then uh, take a look around with the thermal camera to make sure nothing's going on fire and for the positives we get 271 millivolts for a black one and 271 for the red one so those guys are making beautiful symmetrical contact uh, I'm gonna crunch the numbers they're gonna be fine and uh, then we're gonna check uh, the temperatures this is looking absolutely gorgeous right the thermal camera is 8 let's have a look so uh, in the rectifier cabinet uh, the biggest issue we have is actually uh, the cable uh, this white cable going uh, to uh, the gray battery bank here these guys are absolutely incredible because uh, despite being the oldest most terrible batteries in the entire setup uh, they seem connected with a ridiculously long cable uh, they just seem to have the lowest impedance of all uh, because these guys are pushing out uh, about 60 amps uh, which is way too much for this uh, cable. It's just a six square mil, uh, so it's running rather hot. Ouch! Uh, at yeah, about 60 degrees there. Uh, it's uh, going to a 63 amp breaker, which is also running rather hot because it's basically running at the breaking point. Uh, so that's a bit dodgy. And again, that's just a temporary solution. I'm gonna wire that up more properly in the future. Uh, but that is a note to be made. Uh, the big wiring is uh, doing beautifully though. Uh, if we look at the breakers, the one closer to us is the one going over uh, to the inverter. And uh, uh, it is running warm as breakers should, since we're a thermal trip device, uh, but nothing's going on fire. Uh, the same can be said uh, for the cables going into it. Uh, you know, now we're looking at the uh, <laughs> cable for batteries again. But you can see that's about 33, 35 degrees the maximum temperature uh, for the cables there, which uh, is somewhat warm, but it's what you expect when you're running a cable at this high load. Uh, you can also see that most of the temperature is uh, focused around the termination, so it's uh, all the contact resistance there and the heat from the breaker that's actually heating up the cable. If we go up towards where they actually enter the sleeve, you can see that there's, uh, it's more like a bit over 30 degrees. Uh, with, let's see, yeah, the uh, blue one, uh, that one, which is one of the negative ones, the ones that's parallel with a smaller cable, seems to be the one that's running the hottest, uh, which is what you'd expect. It's uh, the one that's carrying the most current out of all of these. Uh, the positive ones, they're cooler. What are they? 27, 28. 
is that's actually beautiful. I don't mind that at all. But this is a pass as far as I'm concerned, except that uh, the uh, wiring for the you know, 300 amp, amp bank there, it, it's, it's, this is not okay. Like, the, I, I, I'm gonna have to fix this. Uh, I, I, I just expected that this ridiculous long uh, six square mil cable would take care of a current limiting for me, but clearly not because those guys are on freaking fire. So, you know, at least that's good to know. And uh, these guys, I didn't expect there to be any uh, heat to be seen. This is also fresh and uh, uh, well put together. Yeah, nothing's. Uh, that's that's going to be a reflection since we're measuring, looking at the metal parts. We're looking at the uh, that uh, thing there, so it's just going to be reflecting heat from everywhere. But nothing here should be getting hot at all. Uh, these guys, they seem to have a rather high impedance compared to basically everything else because we measure the current in these. We're just putting out about 40 amps. Uh, compared to the uh, 60 plus we're getting out of the 300 ampere bank 60 and a half of that and that's with uh, uh, these guys being connected with a 35 square mil cable uh, coming in there versus this terrible job and the extra breaker so yeah uh, these are of course much smaller batteries so I suppose it's not too surprising but they'd have, have high internal impedance but uh, uh, to that extent, I, I am surprised to see. I, I expected these guys to be doing most of the work here. But of course, we still have the other end of everything. So if we look at the cable, an external temperature of about 25C. That's fine, absolutely fine. It's going to run somewhat warm, but it's not going to be getting ridiculously warm. I think we're going to have any hot spots except for right around here because it's going over some heating the pipes. It's going to be a bit hotter than you'd expect, but uh, it's going to be settling somewhere between 30 and 40 if it uh, runs continuously like this for a while. Completely fine. No hot spots. No hot spots at all. So the breaker box here looking absolutely fine we have nothing going on uh, with the uh, underside there Not, none of the terminations are getting hot and uh, nothing's looking bad I'm I'm just really pleased with all of this really 28 degrees max it gets somewhat warm inside this box when everything's closed up, but uh, I don't think this is going to be it'd be a problem. That's looking absolutely fine, and I haven't touched any of that. The uh, curious note: the positive terminals uh, on these inverters gets hot because there's a current shunt right inside there. So the, you might think that you have a bad connection on your positive terminal there, like you can see. The positive terminal if we put the camera in between there it's getting hot but that's just because the current shunt is getting very hot in there uh, just because it's a resistive current shunt uh, dealing with hundreds of amps so don't worry about your positive terminal getting hot it's normal but yeah i think we're basically done here this is uh, just working beautifully i'm not seeing any real problems at all aside from the wiring for the um, uh, 300 amp power bank so we can uh, nicely turn this guy back into ultra economy mode, limited to 33 RPM, and keep enjoying this cold, cold winter with its ridiculous energy prices. That's not bad. This is going to turn out absolutely beautiful when I get everything sorted properly cheerio